In Brockton, we swing for the fences so we can touch home. We coach in Brockton to instill the teamwork that builds a great winning tradition. We do business in Brockton because here you can find a taste of home away from home. We keep our company in Brockton because we love this city. When Brockton is home, everything is within reach. So tonight I am here to um, present and to honor the, uh, I'm going to make sure I get this, the Community Impact Award. We've been doing this award for about four, and I think this might be even a fifth year. Past recipients have been last year, it was the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, who serves as on our foundation, and the Brockton Area Transit Administrator. Prior to that, we've had workforce investment boards, and the district attorney, and the sheriff, and community folks. and. Um, the reason why we do that is because when you all go out into your careers or in your current co careers, it is so important that we in fact have that connection. And when you grow and when we continue to grow, um, that connection, whether it's here within the, the town of Bridgewater and Sue Macomb, I know my colleague from the External Affairs works really hard in making sure those connections are here and with all of you, but it, then again, it's also working with administrators and nonprofits and businesses. So um, our role here is really to provide that impact. And today I am here to um, present, and I will bring him up in a minute, is um, the award this year was going to Mayor Bill Carpenter. And I think this um, little bit of a bio is really going to be helpful, a little insightful into who he is. Bill Carpenter, a 32-year resident of Brockton and the father of six children. I repeat, six children. Previously to becoming mayor, Bill served four years as a Ward 5 representative on the Brockton School Committee, where he was chairman of the Facilities Usage Committee. He was also a vocal advocate for combating the substance use, abuse, and addiction, including um, inside the school system. So that was his impetus for becoming advocate for not only for his family, but his friends. Um, and so he's the co-founder of Independence Academy, which is the state's fourth recovery school of only 43 in the, in, in the, uh, in the United States, serving teenagers um, who are re-engaging with their education while getting treatment. An important work that is, as we all know, our older families have been, have been affected by that. Bill has served as mayor for the city of Brockton for over four years. He's currently in his third term. That's where he lost all of his hair. <laughs> Among <laughs> Oh, you lost before then. But um, <laughs> among many important accomplishments, his administration has established a new economic development team. He's increased investment in public safety, created new sources for revenue. He's updated the city's use of technology, increased diversity among staff. Um, his administration has made substantial revitalization to the city. Pretty incredible. It is a day in, day out, 24-7, 365 kind of day. And part of that is, is my relationship with, with as being the chief of staff to the mayor. Um, it is just constant. It's a constant grind. He never gives up. The mayor has, has been recognized as, as a leader in fighting the opioid um, crisis, as I previously mentioned. But he <coughs> was selected to serve on Governor Baker's um, opioid task force, um, which, which in the end has re released a number of, of um, initiatives that have been followed through both off, um, in the community, but also here on our campus. During his second term, he created the Champion Plan, a police-assisted recovery program, helping those with substance abuse disorders um, obtain a, um, 
addiction treatment. Mayor Carpenter has received national recognition for this effort, um, it's including the U.S. Uh, National League of Cities and Conference of Mayors. And um, the work is never done, Mr. Mayor. And so um, on behalf of George Water State University and myself, I have the pleasure of um, bringing you to the podium today and to present you with the 2018 Community Impact Award. President Clark, thank you. You know, one of the comments you made uh, really struck me, and that was that public service is rewarding. It, it really is. And I'm probably atypical to most of you folks in this room uh, because I never really aspired for a career in public service. I worked in the private sector almost my entire life and um, decided to run for the Brockton School Committee, first time I ever ran for elected office at the age of 53. So it was uh, something that called me later in life. And uh, four years later, became elected mayor at the age of 57 and have won a couple elections since then. So I'm all in now, uh, but when I was most of your ages, uh, it, was, it was not what I really, where I thought I would end up. Uh, but I will tell you that it is rewarding. And you know, professionally, the past four and a half years of my life have been the most rewarding four and a half years. And, can't even put it into words, but I, I truly encourage and respect and encourage all of you to pursue that career in public service because it is that rewarding. You can change people's lives. You can impact the quality of people's lives. You can change children's life outcomes. You can make your community a better place to live in. And, uh, and I just see so many talented people that I was introduced here tonight that I know that uh, will be extremely successful doing that. Uh, when I think of the uh, impact that uh, Bridgewater State University has in the city of Brockton and our close partnership with the university, there's one word that keeps coming up over and over regardless of what area we're talking about, and the word is opportunity. And um, we're building a city of opportunity in Brockton and a city of opportunity for all. I belong to a group of mayors from across the country, 40 or 50 of us. Um, the group is called Cities of Opportunity. It's uh, chaired by Mayor de Blasio of New York and co-chaired by Marty Walsh and has some great people in it. And we advocate for things that will create opportunity for people who live in our cities. So we advocate for a public school seat for every four-year-old because we know that getting children that may be growing up in poverty or growing up in a household that doesn't speak English as its first language, or children that have faced trauma or all the other challenges that can come in an urban setting, that that extra year to start a year earlier really can dramatically change their outcome down the road. You know, it's the goal in early childhood education for us is to have all children reading at grade level at eight, in the third grade. Because we know if a child's reading at grade level in the third grade, the percentage chance that they'll graduate from high school and go on to college goes up dramatically. But for a lot of our children in cities, they need that extra year head start to get there so we can make sure we get them there. And many of these kids come from families who can't afford private preschool education. Uh, we advocate for financial literacy because we know that financial literacy helps families break the cycle of poverty um, and is critical uh, to changing their futures. So we, we, um, we advocate for a lot of those types of things. And, and when you think of some of those goals and our partnership with Bridgewater State University, those are really the types of things we work on together, uh, creating opportunity for people in the city of Brockton. You think about our partnership um, and you know, how our missions align, quality education and public service. And, and that's what Bridgewater State University is about and that's what they bring to the city of Brockton. So there is a, um, and I have to mention this because uh, Fred alluded to it, uh, there is a, there is a uh, 
brought into Bridgewater State University pipeline for sure, for sure. And uh, Julie's son, Sean, graduated from here two years ago. My daughter, Delaney, graduated from here last year. Um, and Fred, when this mayor thing is over, I might even come back, so. <laughs> <laughs> There's some truth to that. People ask me what happens after mayor. One of the uh, interesting things about being an elected official is you don't usually know when the end is coming, so. Uh, <laughs> You, uh, you better be working on plan B and plan C in advance. I think I'd like to go back to school, I really do. Um, recently there was a, uh, I'm sure most of you have seen it, but I'm gonna ask you to indulge me for one minute. Do you want me to get out of the way so you yep. can? Oops, I'll move this over. The most recent Bridgewater State University commercial uh, really hit home with me and I've watched it a number of times. I'm just gonna ask you to take one minute to watch it again, but instead of watching this commercial from the Bridgewater State perspective, think about it from the Brockton perspective and what it says about, because I think this one minute tells you more about the relationship between Bridgewater State University and the city of Brockton than I can possibly do. Well, I graduated from Brockton High and I decided to stay close to Brockton, so I decided to go to Massasoit for two years. I was able to actually transfer from Massasoit with my associates to Bridgewater State University, where I was able to complete my undergrad in criminal justice with my minor in psychology. After that, I decided to switch, and actually I went for my master's in social work here at Bridgewater State University. When I attend my classes, I see people who value the same things I value. My professors in social work are amazing. They are there when you need help. They are there to support you. They are there to motivate you. They do challenge you, and I welcome that challenge, but they are always there for help. All you need to do is ask, and they will be there. My experience with every single professor since I started Bridgewater State University has been positive, and they are just amazing at the work that they do. I mean, Bridgewater State University as, as, a, as a university is committed to social change and social justice, and their values align with my values, and I feel that that really has prepared me to go out there as a social worker and promote and continue promoting social justice. I mean, that tells the story. I don't think there's a lot more I can add. That, that just illustrates what, oh, what, brought, what Bridgewater State University can mean to a young person growing up in the city of Brockton, and particularly that student who took the Massasoit path to get here, um, which is a, a great path for students growing up in, uh, in Brockton. So, you know, when I think about, when I think about what the mission of our public schools are in a city like Brockton, and what the mission of public higher education is, and the fact that we have this great public university that's eight miles from Brockton, and a lot of young people growing up in Brockton have a much better chance to make it those eight miles to this university than they do to almost any other place where they could receive the type of opportunity and education that's here for them. And our job, I think, in the public schools is to position them for success and, and to get them to a place like this. Um, and I've, as I've watched in my four and a half years, you know, as Bridgewater State College has expanded into this great university, uh, so hasn't their commitment has continued to expand to the city of Brockton. Uh, and I'll, I can mention some specific ways, but there's also a very personal connection for me here. Um, and, and that's Mary Waldron and President Fred Clark because they're, they're Brockton people, they're engaged in the city, they understand the city. Um, Mary, as she mentioned, was chief of staff to former mayor units. She's part of my kitchen cabinet. She's one of those people I go to and who's not getting paid, but whose advice I really <laughs> value. Um, and uh, she's amazing and she provides a great bridge between the city of Brockton and Bridgewater State University. And, uh, and President Clark, I truly appreciate everything you do for the city of Brockton. Um, just alone that, well, I'll, I'll mention the impact specifically in a minute, but 
Fred and I began working closely together shortly after I became mayor, before, before Fred became the president of the university. And uh, I'm very thankful for that because it laid the foundation for me to be able to have a great working relationship with the president of the university that I might not enjoy otherwise. And so what I would like to say, uh, Fred, is that um, I want us to continue to build and grow this relationship and continue to create more opportunities uh, for more residents of the city of Brockton. So I, I did confirm with our school department today, and what we're doing is we're going to allocate some permanent office space to Bridgewater State in Brockton High School so that Bridgewater State University can have a presence in the high school. Because that's, that's how important it is that we continue to make that connection stronger and stronger. Um, so impacts, it's an impact award. I guess I'm supposed to say something about impacts. Uh, let me tell you what these impacts really are because they you, you sometimes may have to think about just how broad the spectrum is. Social justice. You heard about how many Bridgewater students are involved in nonprofits in the city, intern in nonprofits in the city, choose careers to come to work in cities like Brockton, uh, where they help level the playing field for people that haven't always enjoyed a level playing field. Um, economic development as we rebuild our city's economy. Bridgewater State University is a close partner in that. Um, President Clark uh, sits on the Brockton Business Partnership as an active member, uh, is a leader in the Metro South Chamber of Commerce that's based in Brockton. Bridgewater State is very actively engaged in, in helping us continue to rebuild and develop our local uh, economy. Uh, education. I don't know if I can recount all the different roles that Bridgewater State University is engaged in the, in the Brockton Public Schools, but I know the Huntington School that President Clark uh, claims roots from many, many years ago. The Huntington School is an amazing elementary school uh, in the city of Brockton. And uh, during the time I was on the school committee, um, in the time of budget cuts, we supported a, um, a remodeling of, of the Huntington School that is the poorest elementary school we have. It's the highest percentage of minority students elementary school we have. Uh, it's in the, uh, has been prior to this year in the oldest, worst facility we had and really needed some help. And as part of that, we went to an extended day and we made a number of commitments, but we could not have done those things if Bridgewater State University had not come in and partnered with us and brought in instruction, brought in professional development for teachers, brought in student teachers to work with our students. Uh, and that school is completely turned around and it is one of our highest achieving elementary schools today, five years later. And that's in large part due to Bridgewater State. So thank you for that. And there are many other programs in other schools too, but that's, that's the one I really like to talk about. Uh, and in government, um, here with the MPA program and the, and the, and the poly science people, uh, there are a lot of folks uh, in uh, Brockton government that with Bridgewater State roots and, and we're recruiting them. And, and uh, I have some of my team here tonight. And Paul Umano is, uh, joined my team about a year and a half ago. Paul is a uh, citywide grants coordinator working out of the mayor's office and uh, doing incredible work for us. We bring him in on a, on a lot of projects besides just uh, uh, grants. And Megan, I got to recognize Megan too because Megan's a student here in the MPA program. And Megan, uh, Megan is an attorney and assistant city solicitor for the city of Brockton and spends way too much time in my office lately. but. Uh, but they're outstanding and I think they're great examples of what this program and this university produce and I'm very fortunate to have been able to um, convince them to work in Brockton city government. Uh, you know, one of the things I have figured out as mayor is um, surround yourself with highly qualified people and empower them to tell you that you're wrong. 
uh, because you are wrong sometimes and you need people that are willing to tell you that before you become even more wrong. So uh, that's something we live by. And even just in government, uh, tomorrow evening, Bridgewater State is sponsoring a citizen leadership program in Brockton. And uh, it's a program we've run before and uh, it's helping us to, to develop uh, and help us get our own residents and citizens more engaged in city government uh, to help us advance the cause uh, in the city of Brockton. And I think I just finally, as I was I'll kind of finish up with where I began, um, because as I sat and listened to Daniela's story when she received the Flynn Award, um, I think just like Miguel, Daniela is, epitomizes what the city of Brockton, the Brockton schools, and Bridgewater State University are all about. Uh, 2010 was my first year on the school committee. And I remember vividly uh, after the earthquake in Haiti, uh, during the six months after the earthquake in Haiti, uh, we accepted over 300 children from Haiti into the Brockton Public Schools. We were the community that took the most children from Haiti of any community in Massachusetts, including Boston. And um, it was a challenge for us. We didn't receive any educational funding reimbursement for the, those kids that year, nor did we get any reimbursement for them the following year because they had come in after October 1st. Um, and despite the challenges, uh, we embraced every one of those uh, children like Daniela uh, because that's our mission and it's just so rewarding for me to sit and see a young lady who is excelling now uh, who began in Brockton and took advantage of the opportunities that Brockton afforded her um, and is here now succeeding and, and excelling here so uh, Daniela I hope when you graduate you're gonna come see me for a job okay <laughs> all, right. all right thank you